In this video, I'm going to go through the full procedure of doing an engine compression check using one of these, an engine compression tester. So the idea of this is it gives you an indication of the health of your engine. So by taking the compression, by removing the spark plugs and taking the compression, we can see whether we've perhaps got valves that aren't shutting properly, piston rings could be worn, um, or if there's a low compression between two cylinders, that could indicate a head gasket issue. Now, I've done two tests on this engine. One is dry and one is wet, where I add oil, and that's to see if it raises the compression, which can indicate dodgy um, piston rings. Now, this is sort of part two in the series on the Dacia Sandero, because I'm trying to find out what the issue is with the knocking noise and what's causing it. Now, one thing I did find peculiar, and if you're an ace mechanic, perhaps you can tell me, is cylinder number two had a spark plug that was in horrendous condition. Now, I've included macro photos of that in the video, and if you could please take a look at it and tell me what you think it is, because like I said, I'm not a professional mechanic, and I really would love to hear what a professional mechanic says about it and whether that could be causing the knocking sound, I don't know. So anyway, so that's what this video is about. And if you can give it a thumbs up and a like and subscribe, that would be much appreciated because it does help the eBay algorithm. And as always, have a good weekend. So we do need to get a few things ready before we actually do the test. So what we do need is a fully charged battery because we're obviously going to be cranking it over on just the battery, which is going to be quite exhausting for the battery. And the other thing to do is obviously check you've got oil that it's topped up to the maximum level. Um, not like mine. Mine is clearly quite low. But I, I think this Dacia is dripping some of the oil out the back of the cam cover. Yeah, so that's very low, so that will need topping up before doing the test. And then ideally what you want to do is actually bring the engine up to operating temperature, um, if you can. So while you do that, you might as well have yourself a cup of tea and a bourbon biscuit. Mummy, don't mind if I do. Mm. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Okay, so now the engine's fully up to operating temperature. That gives us the best conditions for the test. So what I do need to do now is isolate the fuel and the ignition. So for that, what I'm going to do is pull the fuel pump relay out, which is located here, just there, on the Dacia Sandero. Pop that out. And put that to one side. And then we've also got to immobilise the smart plugs, because obviously we're removing those. Um, so that's just a connector on the left hand side of the engine just down there there's a connector there that's going to the coil pack so just pop that off and that should isolate those and then we can actually proceed with getting on with the test okay then so now let's remove the spark plugs so on the day seal we do need to remove the air filter housing because as you can see, the spark plug leads go underneath that and we need to remove those spark plugs. Now it's also worth noting that on the French cars, cylinder number one tends to be on the flywheel side. So we'll just pop this breather pipe off and then we can get a seven millimeter socket and that will just undo the Jubilee clip that's basically holding that air filter onto the throttle body. There's also a breather hose there that needs to be popped off. It's probably also worth noting there should be a hose at the front of this, an intake hose that goes to the um, front of the engine, um, but that's missing on mine. But there we are, so that's the container. 
that houses the air filter. Pop that to one side. And then we can just remove the HT leads or high tension leads as they call them. And pop those to one side and then we can get to the spark plugs. So it's a 14 millimeter socket there for those spark plugs. And they shouldn't be in very tight. I think they're only torqued to 25 newton meters. So this is um, trying to think this is back to front again. That's cylinder number four. And then cylinder number three is that one. Which doesn't look too bad. And then cylinder number two. Now this one was really bad. I've got some photos of this. Um, as you can see, it's almost got some sort of crustacean on it. And then lastly, cylinder number one next to the flywheel. And that one looked okay as well. So it does make me wonder whether perhaps a dodgy spark plug could actually cause that knocking sound. Um, so here's a close-up of the spark plugs. That was cylinder number four and cylinder number three and cylinder number two. Look at that. Wow. I've never quite seen a spark plug like that. So that was cylinder number two. Dearing me. And lastly, cylinder number one next to the flywheel. OK, then. So now for the first compression test. So this one is with no added oil. So we get the extension and the compression gauge. That's the Sykes Pickerman one I'm using there. And you do need the extension to reach deep inside the engine on these. And then just hand tighten that. And then I'll get that gauge onto another camera so we can see it. So when you do the cranking of the engine, you do need to press the accelerator pedal fully down to open the throttle. And ideally time it for, say, 10 seconds. So I'm going for 10 seconds. And I'm getting about 115 PSI from cylinder number four. Or the first cylinder I've tested. So I've written it down here. That's my first cylinder. Okay, and then we'll go on to the next cylinder, which is cylinder number three. Quickly repeat that. I'm also pushing the clutch down as well just to take the load off the engine. So we're looking for results that are all about the same, ideally. And that one is. That's 115 PSI as well, so that's brilliant. Um, it's more important that they're actually all roughly the same. You're looking for that one that's odd. So cylinder number two now. Now that's creeping up very slowly. That should have shot up quick and it hasn't. So I'm not sure what's going on there. That's only given us 85 PSI. So whether I haven't tightened that up enough, I'm not sure, but... I'll probably come back to that one and give it another check. But anyway, we're going to cylinder number one. So we're looking for 115 PSI again. And we're a little bit higher. We've got 120, so that's good. That's still in keeping with the other cylinders. Okay. So what I will do now is I'm just going to repeat that three. on, well, I say cylinder three there, it's actually the third one, but it's cylinder number two. Um, okay, so we'll just give that another quick check, just to make sure there wasn't something I did wrong. And that's actually gone up quickly like it should do now. And again, we've got 115 PSI, so that's brilliant. So we've now got a result that all four cylinders were about 115 PSI. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, whether we've got a dodgy issue going on, perhaps with valves or something like that, I don't know. But anyway, so what I'll do now is move on to doing a wet test where I'm just going to put some 
oil down the bores um, and this should actually boost the the readings I get if the um, piston rings are worn. So I'm popping little brass rods in here like so and then what I'll do is I'll give five squirts of clean engine oil straight onto the crown of the pistons. Now you're probably better off actually doing this one at a time because I did this, filled all of them up and then obviously as soon as you start doing the test the other cylinders are going to start throwing oil everywhere so um, as you'll see in the next um, clip so as soon as I start doing that you watch the oil shoot out there we go look yeah so I think you're better off doing it one cylinder at a time so I've got to repeat that test actually because the clamp pushed down on the gauge pressure relief. So let's see what we get. So it was about 115 psi before, and we've got 120. So it's gone up slightly. So I would say that's actually all looking okay. Now the only thing I've got to bear in mind is that some of that oil has come out of those cylinders. So cylinder number three is 122 psi, so that's still good. And then we we'll go on to that cylinder number two, the dodgy one. Let's see what reading we get on this one. Still seems a bit slow to rise. I think there is an issue with that cylinder number two. Something peculiar about it. Right, and then lastly, we go on to cylinder number one. Probably got no oil in it now, I should imagine. But it still rises quite quick. And what have we got? 120 psi. So again, they've all gone up by about 5 psi, apart from cylinder number two. I think we've got an issue there with cylinder number two. Especially when the spark plug was dodgy as well. Okay, so I'm going to give the spark plug a basic clean before I put it back in and just see if that makes any difference. Because I am wondering how there's actually a spark being created on this. So whether it's almost like there's a corrosion on that. I'm wondering whether the head gasket perhaps is leaking slightly and coolant might be going in there and causing some corrosion. But anyway, let's still check the engine works. So I'll fast forward all this. We'll just get those spark plugs back in. So I, like I said, I've given it a basic clean. Um, because I don't think this engine's actually ever had the spark plugs changed. I've got this funny feeling those could be the original spark plugs. We get those HT leads back on, like so. Connect our coil pack, put the relay back in for the fuel pump. Pop our air filter on, and then the little breather hose. And then let's see if there's any difference. I can still hear a knocking, but I'm, I possibly think it's quieter, just slightly. Maybe it's just me. I think the first thing to do is actually order some new spark plugs. Just replace the spark plugs and then see what happens. Obviously we've got oil there on the um, exhaust manifold from the leaking top cover that's smoking away quite nicely there. Yeah, we've definitely got an oil leak that also needs to be resolved on this engine. Okay then, so I will leave some notes here on compression. Here we are, and you can pause this bit if you need to view this for a bit longer. And then as usual, I'll include my reference photographs. 
And so here we go. We've obviously got the engine bay layout, showing the air filter, those HT leads, and the engine fuse box, um, showing the fuel pump relay there. And then I'll go on to the spark plugs, and we'll have a look at those in some detail. So here we are, spark plug one, spark plug two, spark plug three. Look at that. What is going on with spark plug number three? And then spark plug four, which looks okay. So anyway, you've been watching part two of diagnosing a loud knocking sound on this 2014 Dacia Sandero with the D4F engine. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. And this video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in September 2023. And I can also be found on Facebook and Instagram as Coats and Gators.